Good evening, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church on this second Sunday after Easter. We will be doing the first and last stanzas of all of the hymns that we do. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty, from Psalm 91. Shadows are powerful. Just ask the crowds in Jerusalem mentioned in Acts chapter 5. When Peter walked by them, they brought the sick on mats, hoping that his shadow would fall upon them. It did, and the sick were healed. God's power was working through Peter's shadow to bring restoration in Jesus' name. Because our Savior is risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, his power is at work among us today as well. Even when death casts its gloomy shade over us, we stand in the shadow of Jesus' cross, an empty tomb, and therefore we are assured of his power and his provision forever. As we gather in Jesus' presence for worship tonight, may he fill us with great joy as we continue to celebrate his resurrection, shun victory, and confess him as our Lord and God. Taking refuge in the mercy of the Lord, let us come before him in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By the things we have done and by what we have failed to do, we have not honored you as we ought, nor have we served others in love. We deserve to be cast from your presence forever. Yet, in your great mercy, you sent your Son to die and rise again for us. Help us to know the power of his resurrection and to share in the joy that his forgiveness brings. Enable us to receive your mercy and be renewed by your Spirit that we may honor you as the Lord and God in whom we place our trust. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hears our prayers and answers them for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ. By faith we stand at His cross and empty tomb. We find our refuge and sing for joy in the shadow of His wings. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day which the Lord has made. Bless From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord that is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your Sanctify us in your truth. Your From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is your Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, grant that we who stand in the shadow of the cross and empty tomb Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our readings, the first reading from Acts chapter 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints. The epistle from the first chapter of the book of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia! We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Blessed are those who have not seen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. 
On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, the disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We continue together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Boys and girls, you will now come forward for a message which I have prepared. And while the children come forward, we sing, Celebrate This Child. wonderful day at school and preschool and daycare and so on. You, 
you go to Hinton Community School. That's a very good school. And where do you? Okay, and where did you go to school at? Spalding Park Elementary School, right here in Sioux City. Great. Well, you notice here I have a piece of paper laying here. And today I just want to talk briefly about the shadow of the Lord. We talk about that in the Acts. What is a shadow? Let me show you right here. I have the light on. And look what I have here. That is a shadow right there. Do you see it? What is that a shadow of? Tell everybody. It is a shadow of a cross. That's right. These boys all know what the cross is. And Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And there it is. And did you know that as you walk in life, the shadow of the Lord is always shining on you? When you get sick, if you have any problems in life, if you are depressed, if you are sad, if you are happy, the shadow of the Lord is always on you, watching you and so on. I'm trying to turn this off. Give me one second. Yes, that's right. I'll get it later. Okay, now, do you see something? You see this right here? Did you already figure it out? The cross No. What is the word that you see? Can you see it now? Look in the black. Can anybody out here see what it says? Yes. It says Jesus. Do you see it now? Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -E Can you see it now with the black? J-E-S. What is your name, son? J. See the J? You see, just look at the black. I know. I know Andy. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, okay. So, it says Jesus, though. If you look at it right here. Yes, can you see it there now? Can you see the word Jesus? J-E-S-U-S. -S. Come stand at an angle. Let me put it at an angle. I can see it so clearly. Right there. Can you see it now? But you trust. There, there you go. There you go. All right. So, Remember, Jesus is always with us. A shadow is always black, just like this is black. See that? Shadow's usually black, always. And Jesus is with us every minute of the day. Let us pray, okay? Hold our hands. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son Jesus who died on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us during the good times and also during the difficult times, not only that you forgave our sins. Amen. Okay, go back to your seats. <laughs>
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. My wife and I attended many cardinal games in St. Louis, and we had received tickets from acquaintances from our field work church, and sometimes even from the seminary office, and we were always very excited to be going to those games because we had excellent seats. Down the left field line in the Old Bush Stadium, they were wonderful for watching the game up close, except sometimes for the blazing heat of the sun. No overhang to protect us, just a sweltering, baking oven-like heat that was almost unbearable sometimes until some white, puffy clouds flew by. The shadow they created was a welcome relief, and we were cooled off for a bit, and we could watch the game, and we were so happy for each cloud shadow when it passed over us. Now we want to picture a different scene. Jesus has risen from the dead. He ascends into heaven. The church is just getting started. The believers are jubilant. They're excited. They gather together in homes to have fellowship and prayer, to listen to the apostles teach them, and to eat meals together. They have sold land and belongings to form a new community called the church. And more and more have been added to their numbers. What amazing change from the grief-filled days after Jesus had been crucified. Peter stands tall as the leader of this growing church along with the Apostle John. The two of them have just healed a beggar who can't walk. But the religious leaders do not like what is going on and tries to get them to stop talking about Jesus. They want to silence their message that Jesus has risen from the dead. It does not work. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, boldly proclaims, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So the apostles continue to perform incredible signs and wonders all among the people. The people would carry the sick out to the streets, and those with unclean spirits were brought to him. Oh, if only Peter would stop and heal them and also cast out the evil spirits. In fact, they are hoping that even Peter's shadow would pass over them, that his shadow would make them whole once again. And the scene ends with the simple statement, they were all healed. Now, does Peter's shadow heal the people? Well, it could have. Remember one time, Jesus is traveling in a crowd of people to heal the 12-year-old daughter of Jairus, a synagogue ruler. She is dying, and along the way, a woman creeps up to Jesus. We remember, she has had a discharge of blood for 12 years, and no doctor can help her. She just wants to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, and she stretches out her hand. Then she touches it, and whoa! She is healed on the spot. Perhaps Peter's shadow has that same healing power and presence of God for the sick and the demon possessed. Realize God can be powerfully present even in a shadow. And there are many, many references to the shadow in the scriptures, both the old and the new. We remember when the time comes for Jesus to be born, the angel comes to Mary to let her know that she is going to give birth to the very Son of God. And of course she is confused because she is a virgin. How can this be? She asks. The answer, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. God overshadows Mary, and she gives birth to Jesus, the Savior of the world. 
And later in Jesus' life, he goes up a mountain with Peter, James, and John, and he is transfigured right before their eyes. Blazing white, dazzling glory shines around him. Moses and Elijah appear, and they talk with Jesus. Incredible! And then a cloud comes and overshadows them. We know that because that's what scriptures say. The disciples hear God's powerful voice boom out, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When God's shadow appears, his very presence and his power are in it. Peter's shadow could have healed the people that day. Not because of any power he has, but because God is there performing amazing signs and amazing wonders. Even long before Peter walks by that crowd of people, the writer of Psalm 91 knows the wonderful gift of God's shadow. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now, we know the word shadow also has some negative imagery. We walk into church and the casket is up front, just a few feet from the altar. The time has come to say goodbye to a loved one. The funeral service begins. And we read quite often here at Redeemer, I would say nine times out of ten, Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, from Psalm 23. And this time the shadow is not God's power. This time it is death's power over us for a while. This time the cloud is not the presence of healing and life. This time, the ugly presence of death hangs over us like a cloud of disease and grief. This time, the shadow is not one of joyous excitement. This time, it is one of tear-filled sorrow. We realize how quickly life passes by, and another song comes to mind. Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. And also, another verse, the grass withers, the flower, the flower fades. We realize how much of our lives have already gone by. Like a passing shadow, we cannot help but feel life slipping away sometimes. And now the shadow is dark and ominous, and we don't want to be under this shadow. But we know, because we are in the faith, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that it's not going to be for long. We long for the shadow of God's healing presence in our lives. So what changes the shadow of death into the shadow of God's presence in life? When we stand in the shadow of the empty cross. With Jesus risen from the dead, God's powerful presence chases away the gloom of death. We don't have to worry about death because we know we are going to be living in heaven for eternity. Jesus' resurrection overshadows us with the very promise of eternal life with him. Think of Thomas from our gospel lesson for today. The disciple who is missing from the upper room that Easter morning, he would not believe that Jesus is alive. He hears the news from the other disciples, but not even Peter convinced him of what has happened. He needs to see for himself. And a week later, he's with the other disciples. Perhaps the room is fairly dark, with just a few lamps for light. And suddenly Jesus appears in his glorious resurrected body. Thomas is awestruck. Jesus turns his attention to him. And maybe, just maybe, Jesus is standing before one of the lamps and his shadow falls over Thomas. And he tells Thomas, touch my hands inside. Stop your gloomy doubts. Start believing again. In that very moment, 
the shadow of death turns into sh the shadow of life. Thomas is whole again. The very resurrected presence of Jesus makes all the difference in his life. And ours too. Now we can't reach out and touch the nail marks in Jesus' hands inside like Thomas does. But we do believe that those nail marks and the mark on the side from the spear, Jesus still has even today in heaven because he's not just God up there, he's also man, God and man. He didn't turn into a God, no way. He's up there and he understands what we are going through. We can reach out with our hands, though, and take hold of the risen body of Christ in the bread at the Lord's table. We can reach out to hold steady a cup filled with his blood, powerfully present. At our land's high feast, we find Easter triumphant and Easter joy, paradise open and light and life for all our days. The shadow of gloom and death is changed to the shadow of God's power and life with Christ's resurrected presence in our lives. Can we see the shadow? Well, not like the people who watch Peter walk by, and not like Thomas does when Jesus appears again, but believe it's here. Believe that God's amazing power and presence is here for us. We can listen to Jesus' words to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus is talking about us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we ask Danielle to come forward. We are bringing Danielle Searles into membership here at Redeemer through reaffirmation of faith. Here she comes with Hazley. We baptized her a few weeks ago. I think it was in January, right? It was, yes, January, born in December, born a little early, doing very, very well still. And here comes her husband, great. You can just stand right here with my Beloved in the Lord, you can look at me if you wish. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, answer, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God in the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, I do by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation called Redeemer? If so, I do. 
Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? If so, I will with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, Redeemer. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And we can turn to the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen of Redeemer, let us welcome Danielle as our newest member of Redeemer Lutheran Church. Afterwards, we'll give her a certificate and a gift from our Connect team. We continue with the prayers. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you are exalted over all things in heaven and on earth. You, in your mercy, you shower us with blessings of both body and soul as you care for your creation. Enable us to see your hands at work in our midst, that together with all those who share in the power of your Son's resurrection, we always say to you, Giver of life, you renew our souls through the power of your Holy Spirit as we dwell in the shadow of your wings. As we continue to celebrate the joy of our Savior's Easter victory, Grant that your church on earth always speaks your word with boldness and confidence, that like the first eyewitnesses of Christ's resurrection, we share with all people. You govern all nations with your mighty and merciful hand, O Lord. Show forth your favor to the land in which we live, raising up men and women who will serve as godly leaders among us. Bless on Sunday, Baptized through baptism, Cameron Elaine Schumacher. Bless those celebrating anniversaries, Chuck and Gloria Ford, 58 years. Bless those who will be newly married on Friday, Brady Click and Carissa Roof. And bless our newest members of Redeemer, Danielle Searles, Deanna Bouillard, Adam and Marcy Gusman and children, Joe, Hayden, and Skyler, Jocelyn Robinson, Wendell, and Suzanne Simmons. Bless those who make, administer, and judge our laws, especially our state legislatures, in enacting laws contrary to scripture in the area of abortion laws. Protecting all those who serve in harm's way for the benefit of others, our military, and law enforcements, and helping us always to know and believe. In your son's earthly ministry, people brought to him all those who were sick and suffering, that he might touch and heal them. This ministry of healing continued through his disciples in the earliest church. And even now, we know that Jesus heals, renews, and restores through the means of grace he has provided for our benefit. Place your healing hand upon those in need of health and grief, especially Elliot Johnson, treatment of stage four bladder cancer, Eileen Unken, knee surgery rehab at Countryside, Ellie Poppany, tests and therapy, the family of Betty Weichel, friend of Redeemer members, the family of Eric Erickson, brother of Alex Erickson, the family of Michael Crone, wife Lisa, and daughters and son of Arlene Heck. In the shadow of your healing presence, we boldly confess, we bring all these prayers before you, gracious Father, in the name of him who is risen from the dead and reigns with you forever as our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection made by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs> Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Place that in the north offering box or the south offering box, that would be great. A reminder that our question for our eighth graders is this coming Wednesday from 7 until about 7.45 or so. And then remember that confirmation services are next Sunday, May 1st, at um, 2 o'clock in the afternoon here in the sanctuary. There's going to be an LWML Spring Gathering for the Boys and Girls Home here in Sioux City, a program, a very interesting speaker, Sunday afternoon. If you can come to that, that would be great. Next Saturday is Supper Club at Four Brothers. Sign up for that, and you could do that next Thursday, too. And then, also, there are sheets in the back. We're asking for ushers for our worship services, and even Thursday evening. You know, in the prayers today, Michael Crone passed away, and if I remember correctly, he was 52. I could be wrong one year, but if I remember correctly. 52, that was a sudden situation, and you remember David Crone, he always was an usher here, along with Bob Meyer. David Crone is Michael's father, and, and so on. So they were very familiar with Thursday, um, worship services. So we're asking for ushers, greeters, and texts even. So if you can help out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. You probably saw also on the screen um, the collection that was taken of all of the items, the quilts and the blankets and the underwear and the pampers and the socks. You guys, thousands of pairs of socks. We opened them all up and we folded them. All the price tags of everything had to be taken off. Everything had to be look like it was used. They don't want anybody over there to sell them or something like that. So, Orphan Grain Train in Norfolk, Nebraska said what we put on that trailer and they put it in all the items separated into these pallets and boxes on the pallets about worth $25,000. That was just truly amazing. Because it was all new. It, it just made sense. You know how much Pampers cost and formula and so on. So that was wonderfully successful. And our members right here at Redeemer have all, almost given $10,000 towards the $25,000 that it would take to ship this third container over to Poland on the airplane. It'll be there in a matter of days and it might be there already. I should have, I'll check on that tomorrow to see if it's gone from Norfolk. So thank you very much for everything. We had quilts come from 100 miles north and from the south. They, everybody started um, email, or not emailing, uh, what do you call it, Facebook and all that. And so people, strangers were bringing stuff and so on. So it was a, a wonderful situation and thank you for all your help on that. Let it be. 